Hello, second year dental students. Uh, this will be your oral embryology one practical session. Uh, you've known that the aim for uh, studying the embryology is to know the development of tissues and to have an idea where the malformations can be within the embryological development of the tissues. We'll start with development of the face, uh, including the nose, uh, upper lips and lower lips. Then we'll move to the palate formation, then the jaws development, and finally the tongue development. So as a start, uh, we will talk about some joint parts. You know that we have between the jaws of the skull, bones of the skull, we have what we call sutural fibrous type of joining between the bones. This type of fibrous uh, join, joining will allow for uh, growth if we have under certain forces that are applied we will have uh, growth after birth. Then we also have the other type of fibrous which is the PDL we have known the uh, fibrous PDL part. We have restricted movement as intrusion. Okay, we have another also limited movement parts in the diosis. As cartilaginous, we have two parts of cartilaginous that we will talk about, the primary cartilaginous joint and the secondary uh, cartilaginous uh, joints that we will uh, address. We have also synovial part of joint, which is present here. We go in the TMJ region. We might talk about uh, sections, a sagittal plane anterior posteriorly, a coronal plane medial laterally, and the axial plane or transverse plane. So, in upper vertebrates, we have uh, the development of pharynx. So that's why we've told, we uh, name it as pharyngeal development of pharyngeal arches. These are temporary structures that appear during the embryonic development. Then they would disappear as a uh, leaving behind them some derivatives, transferring to derivatives. These prominences, the arches, are mesenchymal tissue that are surrounded by an ectoderm and an endoderm. It forms clefts and pouches. The clefts or the grooves are adjacent to the ectoderm and the pouches are adjacent to the mesenchyme. Here we go, these are the uh, first four pharyngeal arches. These are the clefts. This is called the clefts from this side of the ectodermal surface. And these are from the inside are called the pouches, outpouching of the endoderm from the foregut. Each arch contains a cartilaginous component in yellow, in uh, red, sorry, in uh, bluish color, and we have a muscular component, also a aortic arch or the artery in red and a nerve in yellow. As you can see, so each pharyngeal arch is supported by what we call a primary cartilage before formation. These uh, cartilages are uh, transient, so they resorb and then they will sm have small part that will form a cartilage which later on is uh, transferred or uh, forms the uh, bone. So each pharyngeal arch has a muscular contribution, has a skeletal 
or bony contribution, also a nerve and an artery. This table is fully uh, described and explained in the theory part of the lecture. So this is a sagittal section of an embryo. The development of the face occurs mainly between weeks 4 and 8. And here we have between the two uh, prominences of the brain and the prominence of the cardiac, the heart, we will have the formation of the stomodium, the primitive oral cavity, or what we call the stomatodium. In between the stomatodium and the foregut, the primitive pharynx, we have a formation of the week four, we will have a back of membrane. Early in the fourth week, we have the five primordial swell swellings that consist primarily from the migration of neural crests derived cells and they appear around the stomodium. We have one single frontonasal prominence, two or paired maxillary prominences on each side, right and left. We have also a two paired mandibular prominences on each side. The first to form is the lower jaw or the mandible is the first part to form in the face. You can see the stomodium and you can see in red the two nasal tacos that will form by the end of the fourth week. So the frontonasal prominence is formed ventral to the forebrain. The maxillary prominences develop from the cranial part of the first pharyngeal arch and the mandibular prominences develop from the caudal part of the first pharyngeal arch. This is a lateral view to get you to understand. The ectoderm, the stomodium here is a uh, ectodermal depression that's separated from the primitive pharynx by means of the oropharyngeal membrane. This membrane will later break down and the stomatodium will open into the pharynx, forming the vestibule of the oral cavity. By fourth week, the bilateral oval-shaped ectodermal thickenings will be formed called the nasal placodes. Two nasal placodes appear on each side of the lower part of the frontonasal problems. The nasal placodes we are prim primordia for the nose and the nasal cavities. Following in uh, day 30-31, we will have mesenchymal cells proliferating at the margins of these placodes, then forming a horseshoe-shaped swelling around uh, the sides of these swellings called medial nasal prominence and lateral nasal prominence. These placodes now are in the floor of the depression called nasal pits. Each lateral nasal prominence is separated from the maxillary swelling by a nasolacrimal groove. Afterwards, the maxillary prominences continue to increase in size and they would laterally merge with the mandibular prominences to form the cheeks and will uh, medially compress to the medial prominences, which are here, well forming toward the midline, finally fusing to form the upper lip. The upper lip is formed by the two medial nasal prominences and two maxillary uh, prominence, two maxillary prominences. So here in A, the frontonasal process, the B, two mandibular processes, and the two maxillary processes in C. D that is shown here is part of the pericardial swelling. In the fifth week of in utero, the 
nasal and optic placodes will form here in A you see the optic placode in B you see the nasal uh, pits and in C the medial nasal process D the lateral nasal process which is beneath and uh, more towards the more upwards and more towards the eye part E is the uh, maxillary process F is the mandibular process and G is the second branchial arch again we can see in A the nasal cavity B is the oral cavity and C is the tongue developing tongue D here is the oro or the bucco nasal membrane which uh, separates between the oral and the nasal cavities E is the maxillary isthmus between the two maxillary processes here is E and the oronasal membrane would rupture at week 5 again A is the nasal cavity B the developing oral cavity C are the nasal fins and D is the oronasal membrane that will rupture eventually in the end of the fifth week and this way the oral and the nasal cavity will become open communication uh, E is the maxillary isthmus bridge of the epithelial tissue part A are the mandibular processes part B is the maxillary process C is the lateral nasal process D is the medial nasal process and E is a nasolacrimal, what we call nasolacrimal groove, nasooptic groove or furrow, which separates between the maxillary process and the lateral nasal process, C, and it will uh, mount down to see the bucco, if you see a look of the axial plane and this uh, scanning electron microscope you can check the part E here is the buccal groove which separates the maxillary process from the medial nasal process this is a frontal view at seventh week in utero the medial nasal swellings will enlarge and grow medially and then merge with each other in the midline to form the intermaxillary segment as you can see here in the red arrow the upper lip is formed uh, by maxillary processes outgrowing the medial nasal process and they would meet in the midline forming the filtrum of the, of the upper lip together with the uh, frontonasal process the filtrum is the middle third of the lip so the upper lip is formed from the uh, maxillary processes on each side with the frontonasal process. See you in the second part for development of the palate.